Nancy Sinatra is an artist renowned for her contributions to music, film, and television. While her name is forever associated with her legendary father, Frank Sinatra, Nancy's life and career are a testament to her individuality and talent. She emerged from the shadow of her father's fame to establish herself as a prominent figure in the entertainment world during the 60s and beyond. With a distinctive voice, a signature fashion sense, and a repertoire of unforgettable songs, she carved her own path. In this video, we'll cover what Nancy has recently said about the rumors of her father being Ronan Farrow's dad, as well as the song that made her dad famous but hated. Join Facts First as we present Nancy Sinatra Confirms the Rumors About Her Father. Nancy's Early Life Nancy Sandra Sinatra was born June 8, 1940, in Jersey City, New Jersey. She gained fame in the 60s for her distinctive voice and iconic hit songs. She's also, of course, the daughter of legendary Frank Sinatra and his first wife, Nancy Barbato Sinatra. Nancy grew up in a family deeply entrenched in the entertainment industry. Her father, Frank, was already a renowned singer by the time she was born. And her mother, Nancy Barbato Sinatra, was a homemaker. She had two younger siblings, Frank Jr. and Tina Sinatra. She attended UCLA, where she took music and vocal lessons. Her aspirations to pursue a career in music were evident early on. In the early 60s, her career began to take shape. She signed with her father's label, Reprise Records, and released her debut single, Cufflinks and a Tie Clip, in 1961. But it wasn't until 1965 that she achieved her breakthrough moment with the release of the iconic song, These Boots Are Made For Walkin'. The song became an instant sensation and topped the charts, establishing Nancy as a pop music icon. Its memorable, catchy tune and Nancy's sultry yet assertive vocals made it a defining track of the 60s. Her success continued with a string of hit singles including Sugar Town, How Does That Grab You Darlin, and You Only Live Twice, the theme song for the James Bond film of the same name. She also enjoyed a successful career in film and television with appearances in movies such as Speedway alongside Elvis Presley and The Wild Angels with Peter Fonda. Throughout her career, Nancy developed her unique style, often characterized by her distinctive fashion choices and signature go-go boots, which became a fashion trend during the 60s. Nancy's contribution to the world of music and entertainment left an indelible mark on the industry. Her songs continue to be celebrated and remembered as classics of the era. Over the years, she's remained active in the entertainment world, collaborating with various artists and continuing to perform live. Nancy and Frank Nancy's relationship with her father, the iconic singer and actor Frank Sinatra, was complex, like many parent-child relationships. Despite the challenges and complexities that often come with being the child of a famous parent, Nancy shared a close bond with her father. Growing up in a household where music and entertainment were central, she had the opportunity to spend time with her father and was exposed to the world of show business early on. Both Nancy and Frank had a deep mutual respect for each other's talents. While Frank was a legendary singer, Nancy was forging her own successful career in music and entertainment. They supported each other's endeavors and were proud of each other's accomplishments. They collaborated professionally on several occasions. One notable example is their duet, Something Stupid, released in 1967. The song became a major hit and showcased their musical chemistry. The collaboration also allowed them to share a unique and memorable moment in their careers. Frank was known to be a protective father, especially given the public scrutiny he faced. He cared deeply about his daughter's well-being and was known to be quite stern when it came to her safety and reputation. This protective instinct is something many fathers share when it comes to their daughters. While Nancy was determined to make a name for herself independently of her dad, there's no denying that her family connections provided her with opportunities and a platform to launch her career. Her association with her dad's record label, Reprise Records, and his industry connections certainly played a role in her early success. Nancy has worked tirelessly to preserve her father's legacy and honor his memory since his passing in 1998. She's been involved in various tribute events, documentaries, and charity work related to Frank's legacy, ensuring that his impact on the world of music and entertainment endures. The Terrible Song 
My Way is one of Frank Sinatra's most iconic songs, known for its powerful lyrics and Sinatra's emotive interpretation. The song has a fascinating origin, an enduring cultural legacy, and numerous cover versions. It's an English-language adaptation of the French song Comme d'Habitude, as usual, which was written by Claude Francois and Jacques Riveau, with French lyrics by Gil Thibault. Paul Anka, a Canadian-American singer and songwriter, heard the French version while visiting France and was inspired to create an English version tailored for Frank Sinatra. Anka had penned new English lyrics for the song that reflected Sinatra's life and career, and he presented the song to Sinatra with the intention of Sinatra making it his own. Sinatra recorded My Way in 1968 for his album of the same name. The song was released as a single in early 69. It quickly became one of his signature songs, representing his storied career and the resilience he showed in the face of life's challenges. The song's emotional depth and powerful lyrics resonated with audiences, making it a timeless classic. His rendition earned him a Grammy Award in 1970 for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance. My Way is often regarded as a symbol of individualism and self-expression. Its lyrics reflect themes of self-determination, facing adversity, and doing things, quote, my way. The song's impact extended beyond music and became an anthem for personal achievement and reflection. It remains a popular choice for various events like weddings, funerals, and graduation ceremonies. It's also been covered by artists ranging from Elvis, Sid Vicious, Frank Sinatra Jr., and even international singers like Andrea Bocelli. Elvis's rendition is particularly notable, and it has its own fan base. His take on the song adds a different dimension to the track, reflecting his unique style. The punk rock version by Sid Vicious is known for its rebellious spirit and stark contrast to Sinatra's original interpretation. The song's enduring legacy is evident in its countless cover versions, each offering a fresh perspective. But this was not the consensus in the Sinatra family. Reportedly, none of them actually liked the song. His daughter Tina once said of her dad, quote, He didn't like it. That song stuck and he couldn't get it off his shoe. He always thought the song was self-serving and self-indulgent. And in 2021, Nancy said of the song, quote, It doesn't matter. It's not my favorite. It wasn't my dad's either. It's a terrible song. Paternity Rumors Recently, Nancy also weighed in on the steady rumors that Frank Sinatra is the true father for Mia Farrow's son, journalist Ronan Farrow. In an interview with CBS Sunday Morning, she said, quote, Mia's son? Oh, nonsense. He would just laugh it off. We didn't laugh it off because it was affecting my kids, you know. They were being questioned about it, and we all knew it was nonsense. She also says she doesn't harbor any ill will towards Mia for suggesting it might be true. And Tina went a step further, claiming that Frank had long since had a vasectomy by the time Ronan was born, making it a basic impossibility. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think of the song My Way? Does the fact that the Sinatra family doesn't like it change your opinion of it? Let us know in the comments section below.